You're listening to the Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host, Big Q and the Guy. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. We're talking about the Powder Puff NFL deal. Man, them commercial breaks be coming up on me so fast. Uh, it's, it's really to the time for something else, my man. But we talked about the, the, the attempt to guess soften the NFL and, and, and the, under the guise of safety uh, and fair play. Uh, we also, later on in this segment, we're going to talk about and, and give our lookout players. And DC probably have one. I'm going to have one. You might have multiple ones. We're going to talk about the players. Why are you players. trying to Because obviously, <laughs> multiple. <laughs> I know the, long, the long-winded one. DC will be able to give you. Man, you just was talking for like ten minutes last time. I had to set the table, brother. Oh, you got an excuse for him to you be low with. <laughs> but uh, anyway, like I was saying, man, we talk about the NFL, and I know if you a lot of you guys out there, I would like to say, man, please interact with us. Tell us what you think about this issue dealing with the NFL. Do you think that uh, the NFL is fine as it is? Uh, you agree with the rules? Uh, uh, how they're changing the rules around? Is it fair? Um, if it's if if one rule change saved one guy from having a, a, a brain injury, or what happened to Shazier up in Pittsburgh, or you you know, or is that fine? Just tell me, tell us what you think uh, in the comment section below uh, of of these topics. Not just this topic, but all those topics. You know, feel free to to let it out. You know, if you're feeling frustrated that a lot of our pro leagues in uh, this country is turning into real weak leagues. Uh, you know, air that out here today on the comment section. Uh, DC, let's finish up on this topic, my man. You know, like you were saying earlier uh, before the break came in about the, the the unfairness of how every time the defense seems to catch up, the fair rules committee or whatever you want to call them, they go into meetings and start gear shifting the rules to benefit the offensive players and uh, forcing the defensive players uh, in many regards, to have a severe disadvantage so that they can score points so people can watch the games. Uh, a lot of weird stuff. That, too. And also, if, if you don't believe that, then think about this. They also changed the catch rule back to where we know it should be. Right. That's Along true. with this. So you can't tell me all of that won't translate into more points per game for very explosive offenses like us. <laughs> right. Well, that's the best. So a- maybe it ain't all bad for a team. Like us. Well, some going to suffer, but, some uh, not going to suffer. Jacksonville uh, team, I, I really I, – I think that's a very talented team, probably one of the most talented teams in the league, and I hope it doesn't affect uh, that part of the game. Even I'm not rooting for Jacksonville. Y'all, y'all know I bleed black and gold, but I, I have a certain respect for um, talented defenses, man. I don't, I don't want that part of the game to be eliminated. Right. Well, I mean, I'll tell you one thing, man. The way I see it is um, the best team's going to win at the end of the day. And whether the, whether the players like it or not, they're going to have to abide by these rules. And uh, we might not be talking about this and the rule that they made with with, uh, with the special teams and all this kind of stuff. But then it might not be that bad, too. It, it might not it be that bad. It depends on how they but, call it, how they officiate it. Every time you have a change of rules, and these are not just some petty changes. This, these are impacted some of the some really core aspects of the game that you could be winning the game or marching to do something then your player ends up having one of those what they call flash plays Tip had rules right you, you have one of those flash plays or what they call a bang bang play which is it's just the action of what happens carried into it now i don't know if they're going to review it and look at it like okay well the guy intentionally led with the crown of his helmet no, in the nonsense, nfl probably so. not and they just it's gonna call live time, and it's gonna be what it is. Right. So we got to understand that, man. But it's gonna be interesting to see. But I guess you know, can, would that go into uh, challenges? Uh, will you be able to challenge that? That's that's all stuff that you know we ain't gonna really get right into you it until give the coaches some more challenges. Then. Yeah, but they won't. <laughs> They're gonna have to be real uh, kind of uh, choosy about that thing. But some people even mention they taking away just two and giving them unlimited challenges. But and they don't that want to slow the game because down. that would dramatically slow the game. It's all the NFL is all all it's three hours, four hours, damn near already. So, 
I ain't mad at watching a few more minutes of football. I ain't going to lie to you. You not, but what about the casual fan that ain't really into the X's and O's of it? Well, they need to get their ass off and watch some soap <laughs> operas. That's what they can do. Anyway, let's move on to our next topic, and we're going to talk they about it. They got to have them for the week four when they go pink. There you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, let's look at the uh, the last topic of the show, which is uh, the segment, our lookout segment. The lookout. That's right, lookout. And in this he particular in segment, you was a lookout. We're gonna talk about the lookouts and who we lookouts. you who we think that you should be looking out for. And we ain't gonna name some guy that you say, well, oh, well, we already knew we'd look out for that guy. It's the lookouts, y'all. Al Capone ain't named none of his lookouts, so keep we, that in mind. We gonna name we gonna name <laughs> one guy. I don't know what DC gonna ain't do. We ain't gonna be no lookout talking well, about Al Kamari. <laughs> right. We're gonna choose some guys that we think that you really need to look out for. And I'm going to start mine off, D.C., by saying it's a guy out there who wears Ooh. number 40, plays for the Saints. I never he's, heard of him. He's a cornerback. His name is <laughs> Lyndon Stevens. Lyndon all Stevens, right, that's right. right. He's from Cincinnati, Bearcat, six-foot-tall cornerback. Listen, I'm going to tell you all, guys, this is y'all notice. I always talk about Lyndon Stevens on the slick. I tell you, you watch out for that guy. I'm telling you, what? this could be one of those guys. So that's who going to replace Ken Crawley. Let's go. Be- <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be one of, one of them guys that you got to watch out for, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, just just watch out for him. I'm telling you, when the when big camp and everything come around, this guy, he has the size, he got the speed, he's fundamentally sound. You better watch out for this young man, Lyndon Stevens. The Saints been watching out for him for a long time as well. When they Before the draft started, they were bringing Lyndon Stevens in. And to kickstart some stuff to, to to see how to see how he do. He didn't get drafted by anybody, but the Saints came around and then got and invited him to come into camp. He's on the team right now, and I'm expecting big things from Mr. Lyndon Stevens, who DC disrespected some time ago uh, by talking about they talking about trade uh, trying to turn a man into a safety. That's okay. I apologize to Lyndon Stevens family for what DC said, and now it's up to DC to come and give you his take on who he believes is a player that you need to look out for. Now, D.C., who is your lookout player or players? Because I don't know what you're going to do, who you need to talk bro, about. why you keep trying to put all this pressure on me? I'm man. just saying, who your lookout players? People, I don't. people don't don't know who, who the hell Linda Stevens is. I can't be they know who he is now. names out there. And I ain't never talked bad about Linda Stevens. I was talking about bad about the Saints, how they always trying to change stuff around. But anyway, they take yeah, they hide to get people, and then they want to play a position they never play. I don't never understand that. But anyway, my lookout player is a guy from West Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. Dion Yelder, tight end. Uh, marriage made in heaven. And, and Is he really a lookout, though? Because I think he's on some everybody's radar. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just asking. Look, this is my lookout. <laughs> some people, of course, Saints family, they might know about him, just like they might know about Lyndon Stevenson and they trail Jameson, you know. But Deion Yelder, he ain't getting no national news coverage. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't even drafted. So how you going to tell me he ain't a lookout player? Come on, man. I'm just saying, but I, I anyway, these people pretty smart. There they are. That's why they, they wouldn't have missed Lyndon Stevenson either then. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Deion Yelder is – the guy that's being groomed to basically take over the tight end position, uh, maybe as soon as next year, uh, maybe a year after that, um, you got Ben Watson basically on a what one year deal, yep. and uh, who man, uh, Josh Hill, one who year. I say was on the bubble, all those guys um, on one year, you know everybody one year, and this guy's uh, he's doing his thing early in the OTA, so that's why Big Q saying all you guys know about him. I'm sure we talked about him before. Um, we haven't talked about London Stevenson, so uh, um, Stevens, London Stevens, but you, uh, apparently, London Stevens. Uh, apparently, I talked about him and put him down. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't got nothing praise but praise for my man Dion Yelder. Um, he's an excellent uh, tight end, in my opinion, uh, for what he has right now. Of course, he still has to learn a lot of things. But he has a tremendous drive, tremendous heart from everything I studied. Uh, while, like, looking at him in West Kentucky, they put him on special teams unit. He's, he blocked field goals, uh, played defensive end. Dude, he's just a football player, and I like guys like that. Um, some people like to call them dogs, you know. Um, but either way, 
I think he's going to be a wonderful addition, whether he winds up being our primary tight end or just an addition to uh, tight ends that we have. I think either way you're going to wind up knowing this guy's name. Um, so be on the lookout for London. Wait, what, why am I saying London? Why am I getting that? <laughs> Dion Yell. Well, right. I'm about to Dion say your guy, man. Stevens. That's right. I'm about to say your guy. Man. That's right. But, uh, yeah, I just heard about him. Yeah, that, that what, guy. What position that he gonna play? play? We, we, we should look out on for that. He's going to back. He gonna play corner. He ain't gonna play safety. Back. No, they're not gonna listen to you. I ain't say. I ain't say that. That they should listen to me on that. I'm saying what the Saints be doing. They're gonna play him as a cornerback. All right, all right. Well, Dion Yelda is gonna be a tight end. He ain't gonna, you sure? He might be a fullback. He's gonna be a tight end. Okay. Actually, uh, they did hire the little guy. Uh, what was his name? He played. Uh, he played fullback, but Eurocheck. he actually can play Eurocheck. That's another guy uh could potentially be on the lookout. We'll see. That ain't my guy. All right, well, there you go, DC. You mentioned two guys. <laughs> like but I, I said, said that ain't my guy. I actually made you mention it because I didn't want to hear your mouth at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there it is. DC picks Eurocheck and Dion Yelda, and I picked. <laughs> I pick really, dude. Lyndon Stevens. Really, you still gonna hey, give me the chance? Well, I like to thank y'all for joining us tonight on the Sports yeah. Corner with Big Q and the guys. Thank y'all for coming on in here, joining us. And as yeah, always, if you enjoy the show, please, please, by all accounts, go to the patreon.com uh, slash the PRO Media Network and show some support. Also, join the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all them good things. Subscribe. Uh, hit the bell, whatever, for notifications for future work and all that kind of great stuff. And as always, thank you for joining us. For me and DC, Earth. Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guys intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys.